Dan sementara itu, antara isu utama yang dijangka dibincangkan dalam rundingan TPPA di Brunei minggu depan adalah kesihatan dan juga ubatan. Isu ini telah dibincangkan berterusan dalam rundingan TPPA sebelum ini. Isu ini dibangkitkan selepas wujud kritikan berkenaan paten ubat umum yang dijangka diharamkan. Dan bersama kita untuk membincangkan perkara ini adalah pengurus Policy Simulation AIDS Council, FIFA Rahman. Hi FIFA, thank you for joining us. Now first of all, let's talk about the statistics for Malaysian consumers, right? When it comes to consuming uh, medicines, 80% of the medicines consumed by Malaysian um, consumers, in that sense, are generic medicines. And if the uh, if the generic medicines are to be taken off um, the market, they might have to pay up to 1,404% increase in terms of the price of medicines. Is this a real danger? Is this a real threat if we were to go forth with the TPPA um, ratification? Oh, most definitely, it's a it's a very real threat. And um, we have had a look at the leaked texts of the intellectual property chapter, which is the one affecting medicines. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, this is this is going to severely restrict entry uh, of generic medicines into the market. It's just basically going to delay it. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the um, average household income of Malaysians, it's about 4,000 something ringgit. And mm -hmm. these are government statistics. It's just, it's just maddening how people are going to have to pay patented prices, which can be up to double or triple of their household incomes. Mm -hmm. And what kind of generic medicines are we looking at right now? Because, because, because I think uh, maybe you can share with the viewers what are the generic medicines that they are paying um, at a very low price compared to the um, original patented medicine, which can maybe cost much higher. Okay, well, um, I'll give you the example of mm -hmm. HIV because mm -hmm. uh, at the moment uh, for first-line uh, medicines, well, all of them are generic mm -hmm. and um, before that it cost costed much much more almost five times more mm -hmm. so right now it's uh, the, the the HIV medicines that are procured by the government are all generic and they're one-fifth of the price and uh, the government saves a lot of money from that mm -hmm. and you are also part of the um, uh, negotiation uh, negotiating uh, people in the negotiations right and you've also went to the stakeholders um, uh, day if I'm not mistaken, um, what are some of the issues raised by by stakeholders when it comes to issues of um, uh, patented medicines and, and healthcare in a sense? So I, t I attend the negotiations as a stakeholder uh -huh. and the main issues that are raised in regard to medicines is the patent extensions. Mm -hmm. So we know that originator medicines, they have a patent for 20 years at the moment. So what they want, they want to extend that by five years automatically. And uh, if there's a new use or new form of the medicine, so if they change it into liquid form or they make it heat stable or you can eat it the whole day without food or change it in some form, it tracks another 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the patent extensions are insane. It could be 20 plus 20 plus 5. So that's 45 years of you not getting affordable medicines. So that's one of the issues. And the next one is data exclusivity. Mm -hmm. So data exclusivity means that the data about that medicine is exclusive to the originator company. So even if we have a public health emergency and the government orders the medicine in by virtue of what is called a compulsory license because that is used during mm -hmm. health emergencies. Order the medicines in, medicines arrive at Port Klang, but because of data exclusivity, it can't be registered. And when it can't be registered, Malaysians can't use it. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I always say it's a trade agreement that kills because the medicines can't reach the people mm -hmm. um, unless, of course, you use the originator medicines, which we can't afford. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a huge number of Malaysians, I, I assume, are not covered under uh, health insurance, uh, which m will make it harder for them to access expensive medicines if these were to go forth, right? Yes, I think so. Um, even for cancer, for example, mm -hmm. um, uh, colon cancer, I know someone with colon cancer, and he uh, he's covered by health insurance, but if he was not, if he did not get health insurance, mm -hmm. he would have to pay up to 10,000 ringgit a month for his medication. And um, I can't afford that. I don't know who, who, I mean, only the rich can afford that. So it's basically killing the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we don't have anything to base on right now because because there, um, the TPPA has not been um, uh, put into, uh, uh, implemented. But as we can see from previous uh, free trade agreements done by Americans with other uh, nations, um, has it always been a negative thing? Um, in terms of medicines, mm -hmm. um, there is actually evidence that um, medicines prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. In the Journal of Generic Medicines, there was an article uh, in 2012 that was published showing that the Jordanian government pay an extra 18 million um, US dollars a year mm -hmm. um, for procurement of medicines, and that's only what the government spends. So, you know, 
other things that the, the public spend on more. So mm -hmm. there's that, and also um, uh, under uh, the NAFTA uh, mm -hmm. free trade agreement, um, Canada is being sued by um, a big pharmaceutical company called Eli Lilly, mm -hmm. um, and all Canada <coughs> wanted to do is protect its people. Um, uh, and in this case, there was a drug uh, for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, mm -hmm. ADHD, and um, they'd only tested that drug on 22 people. So what Canada did was invalidated that patent and said, you can't sell this drug in Canada, you've only tested it in, on 22 people. Mm -hmm. So they were protecting Canadian health, and voila, Eli Lilly sues them. And Eli Lilly sues them because they're not making enough profit. So this is also what's included in the trade agreement, that we can be sued for protecting Malaysian health. Okay. Um, um, looking at um, the, the, the discussions we've had a few days um, as, uh, since um, we started, I think, in, in, in one, uh, on Wednesday, we've heard lots of um, um, criticism on the TPPA. Um, would you be able to provide us with an alternative, saying that we have to move forward, we have to uh, be part of the whole global trading community? Um, if, if we were to forego with the TPPA and uh, maybe is there an alternative to it in terms of um, making sure that we move forward, do a trade agreement, and also at the same time making sure that health and issues such as patented medicines can be resolved in a sense? Well, I'm not an economist, but um, there are there are opinions that it would be better for us to, to engage in, in um, trade agreements with Asian countries, mm -hmm. and that would make us gain much more. and We wouldn't have to comply with everything the United States wants. Mm -hmm. um, but the TPPA, if it has excluded things like medicines, which trade should not touch, mm -hmm. things like environment, which trade should not touch, um, I don't see why when all of these things that impact our lives and, and our livelihoods and our health are taken out, mm -hmm. and it, if it's purely trade, I don't see why it can, can't go forward. But then you've got to think about the fact that there's 29 chapters and only five or six are about trade in, in the TPP. Mm -hmm. and I, th I think we should also talk about the investors um, to state dispute settlement. You've mentioned something just now about Canada. Yeah. And will this be also included in the TPP-8? Do, do, do you foresee that? Yes. Um, I, I, I've heard some positive things about, um, about this being a scary thing. Mm -hmm. from people people who have some say in this. Um, so I, I'm going to maintain a positive stance on that. I'm hoping that they will say no to ISDS mm -hmm. because ISDS is a real threat to sovereignty. You can't regulate. You regulate to protect health, you get sued. You regulate to ban junk food advertising, you can get sued by the junk food company. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's, it's quite bad. And we should take a lesson out of Australia's books because in this negotiations, Australia has excluded ISDS mm -hmm. because they are under heavy litigation internationally under ISDS for tobacco. So mm -hmm. they said, no way, we're not agreeing to it anymore. They've got it in their past agreements, but they said, from now on, we're not going to agree to it. And we need to take a page out of their book. Okay. Um, and lastly, what can we expect from the uh, Brunei round which is happening next week? We can expect that a lot more chapters will be closed, I uh -huh. think. Um, there'll be a lot of Japanese there because it's the first uh, full round that they'll attend. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the Japanese because they've got very strong um, intellectual property provisions, mm -hmm. which would make uh, our situation harder, maybe. So that's what I'm worried about. People are saying that they might just ratify. That, that, that might be the last round uh, before it's, it's, it's ratified or it's, it's, it's agreed. Do you think that will be the case for Brunei? I, I worry um, that it will be. The, the rumours are that Brunei might be the last full round and mm. then after that they might just have bilateral meetings between countries and intersessional meetings. But Japan meetings. only has one session, so how... One full session, yeah. yeah. They, I, I don't know how many bilateral <laughs> meetings they're going to have uh -huh. with, say, US and all that, but I think this is... It, it's scary because Obama's coming in, in October as well, so... So everybody has to be geared up for Obama's visit. Yes, and, that's yeah. right. Thank you very much, FIFA. Um, Tadadi FIFA Rahman, Pengurus Policy Malaysian AIDS Council, membincangkan tentang um, ubat uh, umur ataupun generic drugs dan juga kesannya jika TPPA dilaksanakan di Malaysia. Kita akan berhati-hati seketika kembali sepas ini.